What's up guys, this is Candice Marie, back again with Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology, coming to you to give you your insights and predictions for the new moon in Scorpio for November the 18th, 2017. Thanks for coming back and joining me guys. Um, this is going to be a very sexy and sensual new moon in Scorpio. Um, I trust that most of you guys have been enjoying your Scorpio season. As the sun is making its way to the later degrees of Scorpio, we're getting ready to say goodbye and making our way into Sagittarius. Um, so many things have happened, first of all, since I've seen you guys. I really wanted to hop on here and talk to you guys about what had happened with the um, Uranus um, fire trine that was going on also with Saturn and Sag um, making some trines to the North Node Moon that actually happened on 11.11. So um, that was some pretty intense and powerful energy that was kind of like sending us volts um, and shocks of lightning and kind of aligning us with our heart's purpose, but also kind of landed a few surprises um, we've also recently um, been having Mercury in Sagittarius, which is really allowing our stories to soar. But we've got Saturn making its way to the galactic center point. If you guys didn't hear me chat about that last month, um, basically it's a lot of talk about you know Saturn making its way to this 27 degrees of Sagittarius where we are learning some very intense spiritual lessons. Now the reason why this is important is we are getting up to the Mercury shadow pretty soon. Mercury will be going retrograde in Sagittarius starting on December the 3rd. Um, so things are beginning to get colorful, but before I get ahead of myself, let's chat a little bit about the new moon in Scorpio. Um, so it's going to be hitting on Saturday, November the 18th, 2017, and it's going to be at, I'm going back and forth between notes, they're a little closer than usual, um, 26 degrees and 19 seconds of Scorpio, uh, basically 26 degrees. Um, the reason why I think this one is going to be a little bit more sensual and sexual and intense than usual is we've got a whole gang of planets currently in Scorpio. Um, we've got Venus, we've got the Sun, we've got Jupiter, and now the Moon joins the gang making a new Moon. So it'll be hitting at 342 Pacific AM time and 6.42 p.m. Eastern times. You want to check your guys' time zones and adjust them accordingly. Um, but like I said, it will be on November the 18th. What I like about this moon is that I think it's really giving us the opportunity to really plant some new seeds. And with every new moon, we have new opportunities that we're kind of, you know, spreading those seeds and setting those intentions and kind of laying the groundwork for the next six months leading up to the full moon in Scorpio, which will be in Taurus season. Um, but what I like about this is that there's a really nice blend of energies. And maybe this moon seems a little bit more relationshipy than usual or some really deep, intense passions. But what I'm also seeing is that there's a lot of shadow work um, because we have so many planets that are in Scorpio. It's really magnifying the themes of our shadow self, um, how we're dealing with shadow self issues, how we're dealing with those things that can be hiding in the dark that actually we may be afraid of. But I think what we're realizing during this new moon is it's nothing to be afraid of. These are things that if we're fearing it, we're fearing that there is some kind of potential or there's some kind of potential for, you know, something developing at this time or we're fearing a part of ourselves that maybe we have, you know, kind of turned off and we've made dormant and we have feared letting other people in or letting other people close. Um, those of you guys who have some significant Scorpio placement in your charts or, you know, you know some Scorpios. I was looking at a funny meme the other day and it had like, you know, what people think of Scorpio and it has a scorpion. And then it says when you really get to know a Scorpio and it's like this fuzzy little scorpion toy. Um, but that's really the case because Scorpio has a lot of intensity and a lot of fierceness. But part of that is because there's really something very soft at the core. And you have to remember that Scorpio is a water sign. So um, there is some kind of really deep emotional fears that can certainly come up with these new moons. 
since the full moon that we had in Taurus, I think there was a lot of things that were exposed where there may have been imbalances, be that in relationships, business partnerships, um, finances, things of that nature. Certainly Scorpio and Taurus are the ones that talk a lot about your you know, abundance versus my abundance or what we know that we have versus we don't know what we have. Um, so like I was saying before I got off track, this new moon is a nice blend, as every new moon is, of the sun and the moon meeting in the same degree, so that 26 degrees of Scorpio. But when they come together and they make aspects like the way that they're making, you kind of had the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about with that. I'm going to talk to you guys about that. Um, in terms of the good, there's plenty of good aspects to this um, new moon. In fact, I think the good kind of outweighs the bad, but good and bad is all relative. Um, the good, the sun and the moon are going to be making trines actually to Chiron and Pisces. And so what's nice about this is we're seeing that there is an opportunity for sexual healing. We're seeing that there's an opportunity to kind of supersede any pain, any trauma, any abuse, any issues in terms of obsession. I think of like Scorpio also, where there may be some real deep conflicts and some wounds. You know, I talked about it in my last video. There have been a lot of sexual allegations that have come out in the media. And I frankly, like, I think this is just the beginning. Um, but I think what's happening is that we're starting to see that there is an opportunity to heal through this. Now, granted, this is more on a, a larger scale. Um, for people personally, I think this is going to kind of transpire to where people who have had trauma, both mental, emotional, physical, um, sexual traumas, may be finding that this is a time when they're really starting to confront those issues. Um, maybe even people who are dealing with issues of death and loss also people who have dealt with issues with addiction. Um, I believe all of these topics may very well be coming to the surface. And a lot of us who had quite a wild ride back in um, the time that we had Saturn in Scorpio, like 2012, you know, 13, 14, now we're really able to use the tools that came from that wild ride. And many of you guys are actually looking to like supersede your shadow selves or, you know, confront the shadow side and finally talk to that person who hurt you or finally acknowledge that situation that really damaged your ability to feel a significant amount of self-worth. So that's going to come up. And with that, I think that there is a lot of opportunity because Chiron is the wounded healer. And so if we've got that in Pisces, there's the spiritual sense that comes in where there is some nurturing and healing that's going on. We also currently have um, Mercury in Sagittarius. And during the time of the new moon, it's going to be making a sextile to Mars in Libra. So when we have a sextile, we have a positive energy flow. These two work together as long as we put in the effort. Um, and when we have Mars and Libra that's making this sextile, I believe that the topics are going to be, well, where are we going? You know, where can we go from here? And the fact that Saturn's in Sagittarius is only furthering support the need to raise awareness of some of these issues. On a grand scale, it may be talking about this openly and people discussing issues where they have been abused. Um, on a minor scale, it may be that you're wanting to have conversations with people, you're wanting to confront them, you're wanting to forgive them. There is a lot of forgiveness that comes in with this new moon in terms of instead of just pulling out all of the knives that you would assume assume Scorpio would want to pull out, it's kind of a sense of just bowing down and backing out and not in a shameful way, but in a way where we're choosing to not fight fire with fire. Um, you guys have to remember that, you know, everything comes from fear or it comes from love. And I look at this and when I sat and meditated on this new moon, kind of what I came up with was we have the ability to forgive people who have really inflicted some serious wounds here. And instead of kind of doing them dirty, um, which may be associated sometimes with Scorpio energy or being vengeful or being angry, which trust me, it can come up during this new moon. We'll talk about that in a second. We have the opportunity to do others better than they did to us. And by doing so, we're making a conscious effort to be better people, spiritually, emotionally, evolve, but also to clear karma. And karma is pretty freaking important to Scorpio because they rule the eighth house. So remember, guys, it's kind of like your scorecards are going to be able to be bright and shiny and ready to go. So 
It's more so about being able to forgive rather than having a body count, which can be really difficult considering some of the squares that we're going to have. Um, we also have Mercury that will be trining the North Node in Leo. So the talk is not only where are we going, Mercury in Sag wants to be very out about it and wants to be very Jupiter based. But um, I think it also is about being positive and wanting to be positive about what's on the horizons and moving towards a place of coming together and once again, living more heart centered, centeredly. Um, but we're also going to be having Venus trine Neptune. Okay. So Venus trine Neptune is kind of similar to that Jupiter trine Neptune where it's a higher octave of love. It's a higher octave of healing. Um, you're seeing also some kind of divine feminine energy that moves in and lends supportive spiritualness to this whole thing where it's like, women are not lashing out, women are supporting other women, or men are supporting, you know, other men who are going through these issues. We've seen some of this come up recently um, with some of the allegations that have been made also against Kevin Spacey, and I think it's been an amazing thing to see um, the gay community kind of step up and really kind of, you know, call him to the mat on some of the comments that he made excusing the allegations. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that we're seeing is just support all around. And instead of being angry, um, it's being able to neutralize that and no longer fighting fire with fire. Um, there will also be Venus sextile Pluto. And so this is giving us the opportunity to dig deeper, to love deeper, to go and dive into that water, not really knowing how deep the depth may be. Um, and what's interesting about this is, is that whenever you have a Pluto-Venus kind of entanglement, you're seeing the darker side of love and what may spring up as, you know, obsessive situations or situations where we kind of have a death grip on a relationship or it's also about a relationship to money I think that our values are actually starting to change and so this is still the continuance of you know Jupiter and Scorpio and as it's making these aspects to Pluto and Capricorn how we're seeing um, the tax um, reform kind of evolve and I think they're still going to kind of plug away at it and make some changes and make some shifts but we're starting to look at the different economic class in America and determining who really deserves and who is not necessarily, you know, corrupting the system with needing tax reform or, or needing to have a cut in taxes. And so you're going to see a lot of stuff change in terms of whether or not they determine to really move forward and um, give cuts to, um, you know, corporate America. And I think that that may go back and forth for a little while. Um, I think this is a really excellent time to set the tone to let go of obsessions, of addictions, of things that may necessarily kind of get a death grip on us or kind of, you know, entangle us in a web of um, falling into patterns that are self-destructive. That doesn't necessarily mean that we have to subscribe to the guilt and to the shame. And I think that like the Phoenix, it's important for us to realize that it's not necessarily shaming ourselves for the situations that we've been in, but being able to empower ourselves and rise up from them to learn from those situations and empower other people. So this is a month where you really want to pay attention. You want to do others, especially the way that you would want to be treated. Um, there will be things that are going to end guys, you know, whenever we get to the later degrees of, um, Scorpio, you know, that's like the kind of do or die 29 degrees, things do shift and things do change. Now, granted, it may kind of leak into next month when we begin to have, um, the full moon that we're going to be having in, um, I believe Gemini and then the new moon that's going to be in Sag. Not to mention we'll be in the midst of Saturn going into later degrees and Mercury going retrograde. Um, the bad and the ugly side of this moon is that we have a very heavy presence in Pluto as well as in Mars. And um, it's interesting because Pluto and Mars are the ruling planets of Scorpio. Now, the reason why it's the good, the bad, and the ugly is basically... I do think these good aspects, you know, over overrun the, the negative ones, but even the negative ones, you have the opportunity to spin. So Mars in Libra, which is very kind of wishy-washy, um, is going to be making a square to Pluto and Capricorn. And so Pluto and Mars are not homies. <laughs> these are two planets that 
really do not get along. Um, there is power struggle. There can be conflict. There can be confrontation. Um, there can be a sense of two people going toe to toe and just battling it out. These are like, you know, war gods or, you know, it's literally Hades and, and Mars going at it. The reason why I think this needs to be treated with a little bit of caution is because you know, when it squares off with Pluto, we're starting to see where there's relationship dynamics that are not working or that we're starting to see that there is some kind of Pluto energy that's suppressing Mars and Libra and it's kind of driving people apart, making it difficult for people to kind of cohabitate or be in relationships. This is a bit of friction. But this also spells out power struggles, people power playing each other, wanting to one up somebody else just to make a point wanting to have the last word, wanting to twist the knife. And what's important to realize here is that that's not going to get us anywhere. Um, the best way to use this energy is kind of being able to empower one another and kind of put it in a way where it's like, okay, look what you can do and look what we can do together or look what we can build together. Use the energy that's very challenging in a way that's able to kind of encourage other people to kind of step up. Now, there will be a competitive edge to this still. That's not going to go away. Um, and, you know, the square actually starts to fade, you know, very shortly after the new moon. So it's not going to be in play for very long. But it's important for you guys to realize that this is not a time to like want to one up other people. Um, especially because Mars in Libra is supposed to be initiating relationships. And I think that what's interesting is that if we're running or rushing into partnerships, relationships, friendships that are not in alignment, Pluto and Capricorn is going to show you the crappy, manipulative, dishonest, um, people in your life. And it's going to show you where it's not working. And it's, it may not even be like that you have an option. You might have somebody that just blows up and you're just kind of left going, what the hell? And you're picking up the pieces. But the key to this whole transit is learning not to give people a reaction. Be an actor and not a reactor. Um, we have the continual Saturn and Sagittarius square, Chiron and Pisces. So there is still this kind of build that's going on where we are having some deep emotional spiritual pain that's coming as a result of the Saturn square. Um, I think that this is going to bleed into next month as we have the retrogrades that will reactivate some of these points. What I think about this is that this is just a continual energy. Once we get Saturn moving a little bit further along, it's not really going to be affecting um, Chiron as badly, but it's certainly still talking about kind of like this like spiritual agony that's going on. When I think of Pisces, I think of, you know, like our, our connected consciousness and us as a collective and Saturn and Sag, who's like pushing for change and pushing for innovation and pushing for freedom that this is still people who are going to be doing the good work and they're going to be out there and they're going to be talking about what's going on in the world. So that's going to be something else that we're going to continue to see kind of play out. Um, the other thing that I'm taking a look at, that's a pretty big aspect, guys, and it's uncomfortable. It's the sun and the moon. And at the time of the new moon, they're going to be King Cux, the Uranus and Aries. And so the big thing with this is, is that you guys have to learn to be flexible. And so this angle is like a funky angle. I don't really talk about these a lot unless it's pretty prominent. But this is just basically asking us and the energy is asking us to chill out, to relax, to not flip out on people, to be conscious and to be aware of what's going on around us and help us realize like the energy is very like six of swords. It's kind of like being in limbo and being in that in-between space as we're kind of moving into the next phase. And so when I see this angle happening, I look at this and go, all right, we can't push the energies too hard. And when it's happening with Aries and Uranus and everything that's going on in Scorpio, it's literally that Scorpio intuition. It's that, oh my God, something's up. I can feel it. I don't know. Something's just in the air. Something's off. Something's going to change. And so what you guys have to realize is that, yes, that very much is the case. Um, it's kind of like when you start to see the leaves die and you start to see the, them change color and they're starting to fall off the leaves and every off the trees and everybody panics because they know it's like the end of the year and, you know, the season's changing. It's like that moment where you can't quite put your finger on it, but you know something's about to die. Um, that is basically what's going to be happening at the time of the new moon. So it's important with 
some of the energies at play to really turn inward, to really listen to your intuition, to really pay attention to what's going on at an intuitive level. Um, we're still working with this really nice energy with Neptune. And I think in that case, we have an opportunity to do some really deep um, psychic investigative work still. I think that this shows us where we need to learn to kind of meet in the middle um, and not in a sense of just, you know, kind of, you know, meeting with people and, and giving up on some of our values. I think it's that we're having to learn that we're not perfect. Um, nobody's perfect. We all have our inner demons. We all have things that we have to face and things that are coming up at this time that maybe we didn't anticipate having to deal with ever again. So it can put some people on edge. And so it's really important to treat others with care this month. Be very careful because we never know what somebody else is going through um, and to just kind of hang in there because I think that this does have a lot of opportunity to really kind of show us where we need to trim the fat relationship wise, friend wise, energy wise, financially in our life and set new intentions for whatever wants to be reborn in your chart. So it's important to take a look at where 26 degrees of Scorpio falls. Um, if you have um, any other particular planets at 26 degrees, it will be activated in the chart. So take a look at that. Obviously, if your birthday is around the 25th, the 20, what am I saying? The 17th, the 18th, or the 19th, um, you have a new moon on your birthday. So basically, you're having like a brand new year. Um, and you're going to see a lot of changes around the area of your sun and how you relate to yourself and your ego and perhaps maybe even your career. So if you're a new moon uh, birthday baby, you may want to consider getting a reading or getting a solar return reading because that's definitely a year when a lot of stuff changes. I remember, um, I believe it was two years ago. I think it was two years ago on my birthday. My birthday was on 11-11 um, that I had a new moon on my birthday. And at the time, I was just really stoked and I was really excited because I just knew that it was going to bring a lot of change. And I have to tell you, I had no idea the kind of stuff that was going to happen in a year because, you know, six months into it, I was like, oh my God, what's going wrong? <laughs> Why are all these things ending? But then when I got to my birthday a year later, everything came to fruition and I got to see how everything kind of came together. I started working for myself um, and it really kind of played into my favor. So I've been telling people all week, like Scorpio energy is not nice and fuzzy and sweet. Um, it's kind of like the tower card where you have to literally burn everything to the ground. And anybody who has a significant Scorpio placement knows it's like this holy shit thing that happens where we have to literally destroy everything and then realize that it probably wasn't necessary but we appreciate the lesson and then we rebuild. Um, so that may be how you guys are kind of feeling, especially after that last full moon that we had in Taurus. But I actually think this is good energy. I think that the most important thing is to keep ourselves in alignment and on the path and being honest and embracing parts of ourselves that may be shadow selves. There's, there's definitely some of it in everybody. And those of us who have been doing shadow work we know that it's an essential part of our development spiritually and emotionally to still walk with that part of ourself and acknowledge that part of ourself because that's the part of ourself that's really been to hell and back. And so I want you guys to kind of keep that in mind where there are things that are going to be coming up in this ne next month where there is potential to make peace with the shadows. So the shadow monsters and all that stuff no longer should be something that kind of keep you uh, running for the nightlight. You guys have to learn to embrace it and know that whatever you're afraid of, you're probably afraid because it's potential it could happen. So squash it, you know, make peace with the shadows, let it clear, be good with it. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a uh, intro um, in terms of the um, 12 zodiacs and just let you know, pull a couple cards what you have to ex what you should be expecting for the month ahead. All right, so Aries, let's go ahead and start with you guys. This is going to be your eighth house. Um, all right, so your eighth house being other people's money, death, sex, taxes, but also having this 
you know, new moon that's going to be there uh, with Jupiter is particularly interesting because I certainly think you guys are kind of getting the spicier side of everything this month. Um, to have that new moon in the eighth house coupled up also with Jupiter and Venus is certainly a very sexy time. I think maybe you'll be talking to your partners a little bit more about what they're into, um, what they want, what they're what they're liking, um, and giving them a little bit more room to be able to share with you in terms of being more open um, sexually. I also could see that this is a time where you're talking with a partner in terms of joint finances and kind of discussing things and going into some of the topics financially that maybe perhaps are a little bit uncomfortable. Um, this is also a good time to be setting some financial goals for to be considering um, looking at all your finances for paying things off and getting things completed or potentially initiating um, credit cards or loans and things like that. So let's take a look at what comes up for you guys. And this I get the Queen of Swords. What's interesting is I see the Queen of Swords as somebody who shows up this month and will be very direct in terms of their communication. They're going to give you some kind of insight. It could be that you get a reading. It could be that you um, ask somebody for their advice. This would be somebody who is a little bit more um, older and a little bit more mature than you. It also might be somebody who gives you like a direct message intuitively without even being asked. Um, if you hear something in threes, certainly pay attention for this. This can also be um, women who are kind of paying attention to their intuition and they're starting to receive messages. Certainly the eighth house has a lot to do with spirituality and our connection to spirit and the other side. All right. Um, now we've got Taurus. Taurus, this is your house. This is your house of relationships. So you're coming off of, you know, this full moon that you just had and something is completing within you. You're kind of coming to terms with things. Maybe you're making some personal changes. You're certainly looking to see a change in your partners. Um, if this is your seventh house, it's your business partners or it's your romantic partner. Sometimes it can be um, close personal friends. So let's see what comes up for you. And the card that you have is, okay, 10 of coins. So there may be some sense of investment going on interesting because Scorpio being other people's money but falling into your seventh house you maybe talking about financial situation with a partner you may be also looking to invest and thinking more seriously and more long term about partners um, it's a great thing you guys to be doing that considering that you currently have Jupiter that's making its way through your house of relationships so um, with Venus being there I can also see this as a situation where partners are more likely to kind of spend a little bit more on you. Maybe you guys are helping each other financially or discussing how you can reach new financial goals, or maybe you're just getting a nice gift. Um, either way, when you see these planets go through your seventh house, it's generally pretty nice. You could even see that the Ten of Coins is a time where you're making an effort to introduce your partner or your spouse to um, your family members because the Ten of Coins is kind of like you know, bringing people home for the holidays or bringing people um, home to meet the family. So that might be a situation you're contemplating and talking about right now. Um, all right, so we have Gemini and uh, Gemini, let's take a look here. This is your sixth house. Um, and what's interesting about this is this has to do with your daily routine. This has to do with the people that you'll be meeting. This has to do with your health. So there's some sense of something that's changing for you this month. Um, there's also a possibility that you're able to connect with somebody who can help you with like a new routine. You may be finding that you're taking more of an interest in your health and what's going on with your health. Um, that's certainly something that's really um, important to you. You may be finding that you know, there is a need for you to be making changes in your daily routine. Um, you may even be contemplating seeing that you're making more of an investment in your daily routine. So you're scheduling things better. Maybe you're spending a little bit more money getting a gym membership, um, paying close attention to what you're eating. So there's going to be changes in all of these areas. So let's see what comes up for you for your sixth house. All right. Okay. So the card that I got for you is the 10 of wands. Um, so the 10 of wands is talking about how you're like really trying to accomplish getting some stuff done. I think the big thing is, is that maybe you're kind of taking note as to all of the things that you're trying to complete on your list and you're trying to figure out how you go about asking for help or how you go about completing everything. 
don't forget that Scorpio is other people. So it's important for you to know when to reach out and ask for help. I think that this can also be talking about you physically um, focusing on what's going on with like actually moving things or being able to shift things around. You might be cleaning something out. Um, and it's certainly a lot of hard work. So I think you're setting some intentions for um, being able to clear some stuff out and kind of get better in terms of what you're doing with your health. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move it a little bit. Um, we'll go ahead and get into the next sign, and that's going to be Cancer. Um, and so for Cancer, this is your fifth house, and this has to do with romance and children, your creative projects, planting new seeds. I could totally see for Cancers that this is a time for like flirting and enjoying and meeting people and having fun. Um, this is a time to be taking chances. This is a time to be kicking back. Um, you're supposed to be enjoying yourself and you're supposed to be kind of learning to play a little bit this year. Um, certainly with all of the water energy at play, it's a good time for Cancers to get out there, maybe grab a drink and meet somebody new. But you may surprise yourself because I think that somebody might show up very unexpectedly this month who kind of gives you a run for your money. You know, planets like Jupiter and Venus going through this house is also um, taking a chance on somebody who you may not usually take a chance on or somebody who seems a little bit risky um, in a sense of that, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I can ask that person out or I don't know if, if they're into it or I don't know if they'd be um, interested in me. Um, take a chance, try it out this month. I also could see that with some aspects that are going on when you're with your seventh house, you may be actually breaking down your walls and considering like really opening up and being ready for not only a relationship, but having like a really deep and intense, um, passionate connection to somebody. So uh, the card that I get is the Page of Cups. Um, so this is a fun card. First of all, I said go out and get a drink. Um, obviously, be responsible. But I think that that's kind of appropriate for that card. It's about going out, having a good time, you know, being able to um, be fun and just kind of like share with people and exchange with people. Um, but it's also very much what I said about taking a chance and asking somebody. You might find that if it's not you're the one who's doing it, you're kind of taken back and you're surprised that somebody wants to spend time with you that, um, you, that, that probably kind of throws you off guard a little bit. Um, the Page of Cups is somebody who is a young water sign who has fun. I could also see the five, um, the fifth house having to do with children and how you're connecting with children and how you're either spending more time with children and needing to kind of spend a little bit more on children um, or maybe even kind of getting baby fever. So pay attention to that, Cancers, because that's your fifth house. Moving on to Leo. Leo, this is your fourth house. So Interesting stuff going on for Leos because, you know, you have some nice aspects to your sun. You're starting to see that Jupiter is opening up your fourth house and your house and home. And there's some kind of talk about, okay, how do we spruce up the home? Um, what can we do for the home? Are we looking for a new home? Are we wanting to renovate? Are we wanting to um, expand our home? You know, are, are people going to be here towards the end of the year? What do we need to do? What do we need to buy? How do we prepare? So Leos might be thinking about this a lot right now. And this is a big year for your home, especially because many of you guys will be upsizing or getting your own home or sharing a home with a partner. Um, so pay attention to that. But for Leos, I think that this is actually a really great aspect. Um, the card that I get for you guys this month is the Hanged Man. And so here's what's interesting. You may be contemplating whether or not you should be making preparations. You may be going back and forth and deliberating whether or not you're ready to do something, to buy something, to put that invite out there, to have everybody over at your house for the party or to have an open house. Um, wait a little bit because the hangman is certainly kind of saying like not everything has played out yet. You need a little bit more time. Um, that also speaks to me in terms of like Neptune. So it's saying like you may get something intuitively because the fourth house also has to do with like your your kind of like your your intuition and what goes on emotionally internally. Um, so you might want to pay attention to like a gut feeling that you have this month or um, if you're feeling like you really need to kind of connect to family or connect to back home um, or there's something that you're dealing with back home, wait a little bit because it almost seems like all the facts aren't out quite yet. You might actually get a little bit more information after the new moon. All right. Now we've got Virgo, and Virgo, this is your third house. So this has to do with like short distance travel, 
communication, certainly a lot about communication, um, perhaps maybe dealing with siblings or dealing with cousins and aunts and uncles and things like that. Um, but with Venus showing up there, you might be splurging a little bit, contemplating getting away, um, spending some money and getting out of town. I think that that might actually be a good idea for you, Virgo, especially considering the fact that now that you've spent the past year focusing on relationships, you're allowing yourself to have some downtime. Um, but this could actually make it more possible for you to have a little TLC with someone else um, to be able to have some real, you know, exchange of feelings and thoughts. Um, if you're single, you might be feeling like you need to get away to kind of clear your head or to maybe get some writing done or maybe you're actually committing to a type of um, class or a program. Maybe you're picking up a book that's about self-help and things of that nature and kind of starting to put your ideas in order for how you're going to go about expanding your mind this year. The card that I get for you is none other than the death card. Uh, not a bad card to be pulling on the new moon in Scorpio. It's kind of saying some Virgos are going like, okay, that's it. <laughs> this is what has to happen. Be aware that your words have power, Virgo. So whatever you're saying right now, whatever um, intentions you're putting out there, whatever organization you know, you're know you doing and getting your ideas and your thoughts and your journals and your vision board, everything together, like there's a lot of momentum here. But the key is, is that you really have to do, you really do have to put an end to certain habits and you have to move forward. So the death card's a good card to be pulling on that. I'm not too worried about it. Now we've got Libra and Libra for you guys, this is your second house. So this is all about your income, your value system, the money you make, um, the money that you make through, you know, working with other people. Um, this could also be money that's owed and financial situations that need to be taken a look at. Now it's not bad because Jupiter is there. So this is actually a good year for Libra risings and Libras in terms of being able to boost their income, especially because the sun and Venus are there right now. So it's giving you the opportunity to really start generating ideas. Um, I think that you're going to see that people are a little bit more giving with you this month and you're a little bit more likely to receive a little bit extra cushioning. People might be actually, you know, tipping you more or seeking your services or wanting to be able to benefit you in some way. The other thing is, is that with that square going on to your first house and your fourth house, you have to be really good about boundaries. Whether that's in business or in the home, it's important for you to not take any slack off of anybody um, because that certainly does jeopardize the second house being in the middle. And Libras have a tendency when they feel better to do better, not just financially, but all around. And so you might find it a little bit more difficult this month to assert yourself and assert your boundaries. But what's important is if you have some financial goals, you have to get your self-worth behind that and you got to plant those seeds. Um, the card that I get for you this month, Libra, is the moon. So here's what's cool is that we also talked about, you know, the trines that are going on. Um, to Neptune in your sixth house. And so I think a lot of Libras are really kind of shifting gears and trying to figure out how they can not only make more money, but how they can use their intuition to better guide what they're doing. And I think Neptune's helping you guys do that in the sixth house. Um, the one thing that you really want to focus on is that you know, you have to look, unfortunately, for deception. And that can come up during a Scorpio new moon because, like I said, you know, there are shadow topics that are coming up. So if this is about making financial arrangements, transferring funds, agreeing to be able to pay something off or having somebody owe you something, make sure you read the fine print and that you're also listening to your intuition because if something doesn't feel right, don't go in on it, okay? All right. So Scorpio, this is for you guys. This is your new moon for the year. Uh, must feel pretty good with Jupiter being in Scorpio. A lot of Scorpios are starting to kind of see the clouds part and the sun come out. So it's really good for you guys to be able to feel good and move forward. But being that it's in your first house, there is some sense of you really focusing on what you want to shift, what you want to change. A lot of it has to do with how people see you. If you're setting intentions for how people are going to perceive you, it's important for you to come to terms with the parts of yourself, like I said, that you may not be so crazy about. Whether it's intense personality traits, whether it's, you know, wanting to break the mold of feeling like, you know, you, you've got resting bitch face. I always joke with my sister about that because we're both, we're both Scorpios. And so we always say that Scorpios sometimes have this tendency to like, you know, carry this like unfriendliness about us on the exterior. But then you talk to us and you realize like that's not really always the case. 
If you're looking to better connect with people during this new moon, then maybe intentions need to be set about how you want to really be perceived the same way that you're feeling on the inside. And it might be still a process of how you're learning to love yourself and how you're wanting to look and how you're wanting to come across to other people. Um, in my opinion, I think that this is great because you've got a whole slew of planets um, in Scorpio that's actually really Putting you in the spotlight, people are really able to see you and see you shine. And certainly with Venus being there, there's an aspect of maybe you spending a little bit more on yourself or paying a lot more attention to your appearance and making some changes um, to your visual appearance that you feel like better, you know, kind of shows off who you really are. So the card that I get for you is <laughs> the Nine of Cups. So this is the wish card. This is literally getting what you want. So remember that new moons work in a cycle of six months. So the intentions or the goals or the ideas that you're planting now are coming to fruition in the spring. But it's important for you to invest in yourself because when you do that, then you're really able to show other people how much you value yourself. All right. So moving to Sag. Um, oh my goodness, Sag. Are you guys like having affairs? Are you guys messing around? Um, are you guys lusting after somebody or having sexy dreams about someone? I don't know how it's not possible with all these planets going through your 12th house. Maybe you're having fantasies that you're playing out in your head that you're really wanting to talk to a partner about. Maybe you're getting into some sexy videos or contemplating um, some role play perhaps. There's some stuff coming up where it could be good or bad with this transit. The 12th house is certainly the deep subconscious and what's unexpected, but it also can be some shady stuff. So it's really important for you guys to pay attention to your dreams. With the sun, Jupiter, and you know Mercury left, but you do have Venus, you're either potentially considering a behind the scenes romance, you're still contemplating something with someone, you're lusting after someone, this could also be like behind the scenes dealings, financial dealings, um, you know, wrapping things up and wanting to iron out all of the details. This is still an area that you want to be careful in when it comes to love and finances because you have to expect the unexpected. There is an opportunity where there can be some stuff happen unexpectedly and you have to be prepared for it. So you really want to make sure that you're very thorough looking everything through. Um, there is a sense of secrecy with this placement, especially as Venus is going through. So you may be a little weary about talking to somebody and telling them about a certain personal issue or a financial issue. And in that case, I would say you almost want to be careful because it's, it's not a month that you want to let the cat out of the bag. Um, all right, so let's see what's coming up for Sag. Okay, and the card that I get for you guys is the Knight of Swords. With this card, I almost want to say, like, watch what you say because it could come back and bite you in the ass. And <laughs> I say that with love, um, but you guys also have Mercury and Sag right now. So some Sages might feel a little bit sassier than usual. It's important to just kind of go with the flow, be cool. Um, but be careful about what you say, because if you're saying something and it's just coming out of your mouth or you're not necessarily thinking things through, the Knight of Swords is somebody who can come back at you and like hold things against you or say things behind your back. Um, this is something that you really want to watch out for. And, you know, especially leading up to like Mercury retrograde and Sag, you don't want to have a whole like, I didn't say that situation. I didn't mean it that way. Um, because it could end up really kind of creating some problems unexpectedly that would brew between now and the retrograde. So watch out for that, Sag, and don't let anybody stab you in the back. Um, now we've got Capricorn, and this is your 11th house. So for you guys, this has to do with your friendships. Um, this could even be like new potential romance coming through friendships. This could be you setting intentions for, you know, really wanting to get recognition for certain projects that you've been working on. It's going to be great for you socially. I think that, you know, you may very well meet somebody at a party. Um, you could very well go out at night and go to a birthday party, go to a dinner, um, get introduced to somebody by a friend. There could also be a sense of you really like focusing on winding things down and like wanting to start getting ready to take it easy. But as you're starting to do that, you kind of realize like, oh, I've got a second wind. Like maybe I just want to go out and have some fun. Um, I think that that's okay. I also feel like this is an opportunity for some Capricorns who might be starting to kind of feel the push with Saturn coming. Um, some of you guys are hitting the internet and looking for new jobs or looking for ways that you can connect with um, 
groups of people and feel like you have like community. A lot of Capricorns are feeling like, you know, they're being cast out or they're not necessarily connecting with people. Some of you guys, especially with the Cardinal Squares, have had some problems this past year um, in terms of kind of feeling isolated. So this is a month you really want to get out there because I feel like you're going to get some attention. I feel like you might even get some love in. We'll see, especially with this moon. Uh, and the card that I get is... <laughs> The lovers, sexy time. If, yeah, if you have a romantic encounter with a friend, if you have something that kind of develops that gets kind of like, okay, am I in the friend zone? Like what's going on here? Hang out with that person, go with the flow. Um, this might even be that you contemplate working with friends and getting friends to um, work with you and kind of even help support you on some ideas for those of you guys who are trying to start new businesses or if you're kind of running some kind of social group or some kind of um, funding or something of that nature, look to your friends because they'll be able to really help you this month. All right. So now we have Aquarius and this is a new moon that's going to be in your 10th house of career. Um, some of you guys are really making some moves and making some changes, especially with the south node making aspects to Aquarius. There's some kind of clearing out. There's some kind of like karmic thing going on where many of you guys are really realizing I don't want to be doing this I want to be doing that or I want to be moving more into this direction in my career or I want to be making more time for that in my life remember that the 10th house is the world stage and so this is not only your career but how other people see you and there is a sense of you also wanting to kind of shift up your identity a little bit and put out some stuff out there that might be different some Aquarians are dropping new businesses or contemplating moving forward with new businesses and it's a great time to do that especially considering here comes Mars for Scorpio soon Jupiter Venus and the Sun are there so there may be some sense of you putting money into a project to make money um, having to make investments in yourself to be able to get money out of it there is majorly a focus in you being able to get something up off the ground and get recognition this month. Um, I think it's great. And I think for those of you guys who haven't gotten that far yet, it might even be having just like that realization that it's like, you know what, this isn't working for me. I got to find something else. And so Scorpio is very different. This tells me that you're going in a different direction in terms of what your interests may be. So my, ex my advice on this is, is that you guys have to really kind of like follow your heart and you have to listen to what's going on in intuitively inside, because if there is an emotional lack in it and, and a disconnect from what you're doing, or even like even what your hobbies are. If you look around and realize, you know, I'm not really invested in anything emotionally, this is the month where you might actually kind of follow that. Um, all right, and the card that I get is the King of Cups. So yeah, the King of Cups is totally the King of Emotions, and he's somebody who is not gonna settle for anything other than what is satisfying for him emotionally. This also might be a water sign male who plays a role this month in helping you realize your desires and helping you get ahead financially or in terms of your career. This could be somebody who um, would also, you know, share their ideas with you. You know, they would talk to you about their passions. It may be a conversation that sparks something and makes you feel really in alignment um, with wanting to kind of take a chance and, and make a move. Um, this could also be a superior. So it could be like a boss or a father figure or, or, or a partner figure who would be older than you who would talk to you and kind of ask you, you know, what do you want? What's important to you? You know, where, where is your heart in the matter? And last but not least, we have Pisces. And so Pisces for you guys, this is your ninth house. So it's setting new intentions in terms of, you know, spirituality, um, religion, foreign stuff, things about going other places, having a higher perspective. It's like a lot of like philosophy. And so you may be having some major shifts in terms of this. You might be seeing that there's a lot of power in understanding other places, um, especially considering, you know, Jupiter going through your ninth house. That's that's extra lucky. So you might even find that parts of your daily routine or even your job routine is like starting to open up and expand into new levels where you have the opportunity to really start doing some traveling connected to work or being able to have access to um, other people with other perspectives. That's a big theme that's going to come up for you this year is like what you're learning through other people and how you're learning about karma and how you're learning about 
the energy that you put out into the universe and what comes back from that. So this is particularly a lucky year for you, Pisces. Um, the card that I get is the Knight of Pentacles. And so I think that this is an indication that there is some kind of financial something coming. You know, knights are on, on horses, they run towards you. They've either got a gift or they've got some kind of message. And in this case, it's talking about your finances. Somebody might actually step up this month and want to help you with something. They may want to help you invest or, um, you know, get out a loan for school. Or they might talk to you about wanting to assist you with a car or assist you with something that has to do with travel. You might actually start planting the seed and saving money and setting the intention for going on a trip. And not just a close trip, but a faraway trip. It seems like this month you're also really focused on being able to maybe even potentially supersede your financial limitations. If you've been a little overly spendy, there might be a sense of you getting some help this month and somebody helping you with your financial situation. So that way you're not feeling like you're potentially, you know, having this looming over you. So it's really lucky. Um, Thank you guys once again for like listening and for tuning in and being here. Um, I really appreciate it and I love being able to do these videos for you guys. As always, if you can like, comment, and share, that would be really awesome because I'm trying to spread this channel to everybody. Um, I also look forward to doing some more videos here soon. Um, I didn't get to say this earlier in the video, but I like just recently got my voice back. So been a little down sick this week. That's why the video came a little bit later than usual, but I am going to be doing some new videos this week. That's about my trip to Salem and uh, this new move of Black Moon Lilith moving into Capricorn because I have something extra special for you guys. And if you guys want a hint, it has to do with witchcraft. So stay tuned because I'll be putting that video out really soon and talking about um, Lilith's journey into Capricorn and what this means for all of us. And I also am working on the Uranus-Neptune videos for you guys. But if you have any other ideas, any other questions, things that you want to know about, please don't hesitate to comment. Um, if you want to book a personal reading with me, you may do so if you head over to beyondtheveiltarot.com. You can see my bio and my list of services. I have services that are new and on sale this month. And it's also possible for you to book a reading for the new year as well as um, a reading for a friend or a relative as a gift. Anyway, I'll see you guys really soon. And until next time, have a very sexy Scorpio new moon. Bye, guys.